I want to talk about this Paulina Poriskova lady, the 56-year-old supermodel that dared to look her age. Do you see this? I did a video on it, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So uh, Poriskova was once the world's highest paid model, but as she hit her 50s, she says she was suddenly invisible. Now 56, she's leading a new wave of older women, taking their place in the spotlight and on the catwalk and flaunting it on Instagram in her bikini. What do you think of uh, Paulina Poriskova, Carl? I think that nature is a very cruel mistress. To women, very much so. Yes, to women. Uh, she's she's not overly kind to men either, to be honest. But uh, the we get the better end of the deal out of the two. When we get older, we do. Yeah. Yes. When we get older, but when we're young, we don't. You know, it's quite rough actually. Shite. Yeah. Well, we're we're thrown into a world where we're competing with a bunch of men who have a bunch of advantages over us and there's no way of getting these advantages until a set period of time has passed <laughs> so you just yeah. sat there right so there's literally nothing you can do other than get your head down and get to work yeah. you know that's all you can do as a man uh, but women have got a completely reverse dynamic and it's kind of unfortunate actually they're they're, they're in our society they're, they're, they're they they emerge into a society that doesn't warn them that this doesn't last forever. Their birth, as, a, as a, they become a woman, 18 years old. And you can see all this, all the OK Cupid data and things like that. Women are most attractive to men, all men, at about 21 years old. Like every man will say 21 year old is the most attractive woman. I've seen the same graph. Age. I've seen the same graph that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's hilarious. Whereas women will say, you know, it'll, the man's, the, the most attractive men will be roughly their own age as they get older uh, and, and peak at about 40, 45. Um, and so men men have that advantage over women is that women are given a huge amount of social and sexual power in their youth that is just drained away as they age. And this is not fair, but it is a fact. And so we, this is what women should be. They should be using their time in their youth to find the. The, the best man for them, the man they really want, uh, and get him into a long-term relationship, uh, preferably a marriage. So when they're in their 50s, they have the companion and they have earned the the status of being the wife of this man. You know, this is not, they're not going to be finding themselves on their own because at 56, men are not looking for a 56-year-old woman. Men who are eligible and who are looking for a partner do not consider 56-year-olds unless they're a significant amount older than 56. Well, the thing the thing that I saw from reading that article, um, this Paulina lady is upset because previously she would walk into a party and everybody would turn and look at her and she would be the showstopper. And now that's not happening anymore and younger girls are doing that. You know, The reverse is true. The guy at 18 that walks into a room no one gives a shit about, yeah. but at uh, 48 when he's the CEO of a company and he's flown in on a private jet or he's got other markers of status mm -hmm. or prestige or acclaim or whatever, then maybe people will. So mm -hmm. over time, the um, notoriety and value and prestige that society holds you in is going to change. Yes, that, yeah. is, that is true. The issue, the, the main issue that I saw with this is that the model was presuming that the thing which gave her value when she was younger should still be the thing which gives her value when she's older, and that yeah. that felt really tragic to me because I can see how I can see how a a girl who enters the world of modeling who continues to be in that world who is told that her looks are her primary contribution mm -hmm. to the world, and this was a woman who I think had two or three children, um, and had a husband up until only a couple of years ago, and then got separated, um, so. This is someone who who's had the opportunity to cultivate other parts of her life, other things that she feels she contributes mm -hmm. to the world in a way which genuinely makes her something that appreciates with time that doesn't depreciate with time. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that, and this is true for guys as well, I think anybody that gets to their 30s and is still primarily taking their, their main source of value to the world from the way that they look is they have invested their resources into a depreciating asset because over time that is going to wane. And what you mm -hmm. need to try and do is come up with grace, poise, interest, Gravitas. humor. Yeah, all of those things, right? These things are going to appreciate with time. These are, mm. these are the things that you can have when you're 70 and still crush a room with. You know, mm. you can have comedians, uh, you know, your granddad, you don't think about your, you're not bothered about your granddad walking into a room because he's like the best looking guy in the room, but he might mm. be the one that's got the most virtue or wisdom or insight yeah. or humor or balance or whatever it might be. And there's a lie that's sold from 
the media and from consumerist society mm. that the primary value that women have isn't even their beauty, it's their hotness. Mm -hmm. If you look at the sort of women that we see on TV, on Love Island, I'm aware that I'm shilling for this as well, um, but the, the girls that go on there, not that they're not always... It's a part of your wisdom. Don't apologize for yeah, it. True. Uh, not that they're not always, they're not ever beautiful, but they're often hotter than they are beautiful. Mm. They're being signaled off a very, very immediate hotness as opposed to timeless beauty, mm. which I think... Because, I mean, you could, you could be beautiful in a, in a very conservative dress, you know, uh, but you can't be hot in a very conservative dress. Yeah. You know, that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Um, but but you, you, I, I, think you've, I think you're making a great point. And the... Like it's very rare for men to be able to leverage their attractiveness uh, to any significant degree. Like you know, that's a very very small percentage of men who become like you know famous actors or something in their twenties and then get you know any woman in the world. That's Chris you know, Hemsworth that's probably, or the Leo Leo DiCaprio's of the world. Yeah, yeah, it's probably not going to be you, right? So what you you're probably about a five out of ten, like you know, like me. Uh, and you know, most women are going to be about a five out of ten, but women are more attractive as they're young and grow less attractive as they get old, and men are less attractive as they're young and grow more attractive as they're old. And this is just the way that nature plays the game, exactly as you were describing it. Um, but the uh, and it is exactly as you say, like society is not preparing women to learn that. I mean, I can't even imagine what it must have been like to be twenty-one years old and literally have the world at your feet. You know, and I think most men have no idea what that experience is going to be like, because I was nobody of any importance and nobody cared about, you know, me in any particular way, apart from my friends and family, of course, you know, no, I was not in any way Im impressive or important when I was 21 years old, unlike this model who was getting, you know, millions of dollars per contract and who was commanding the room and who was at the very top of society, you know, and so to just have that, you know, just, just slowly fade away until no one cares about me. It's like, well, yeah, but you've essentially were given a gift when you were young and you didn't as you say cultivate anything else you thought well i've got this one thing i don't need to do anything else whereas i've had to have this slow laborious and often depressing ascent to a position where people actually give a shit what i have to say you know and people actually care whether i'm i'm you know i, I say this or that other thing and it's it's a very privileged place to be but i've worked really hard for it you know and it's it's not something can just be taken away by you know my my growing older unless i go totally senile of course but then i think i've got other problems at that point um you know it's it's something that and i i can it's a it's this this thing that i can continue to cultivate that will continue to get better whereas she's out of options now you know she can't do that and we don't prepare women for this inevitability it is inevitable that you will get old you'll become saggy you'll get wrinkly and you'll become infertile and then men will not be interested in you. So if you base your success off the interest of the opposite sex, that's eventually going to stop. And you need to be prepared for that. And most, most for all of human history, every civilization knew this and accepted this as a part of the sort of teleology of being a woman. This is what's going to happen. So we and we had social roles for women to fall into, you know, to grow into after the their beauty had faded somewhat you know you'd be married you'd be a pillar of the community you'd be involved in some sort of social club or you know a charity you'd be doing something you and then you 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 go to a mother and then to a grandmother and so now you're you know as an older woman you still have plenty of value to your children and your grandchildren there are still people who care about you and don't get me wrong this other woman has children and will doubtless have grandchildren so she she at least still has that life path open but a lot of women these days are not having children but even e even them, the even the conversation that she brings up there she doesn't say she doesn't mention them does she precisely no it's weird isn't it because you'd think she'd take solace in the fact that she at least has a family who love her you know but she's uh trying to gain the attention of men like she did when she was in her 20s it's like well, that that period of your life is over you need to come to terms with that because it's kind of embarrassing granny that you're posting bikini shots on instagram like what are you doing i don't want my grandmothers to be doing that. i want them to have a bit of dignity and self-respect and to to grow into the role that nature has expected of you you know because you can't avoid it you know you, as she's found out to her chagrin and you're you going know, to be but, you're going to be defeated by someone who is yep. 30 years younger than you now yep. which but, she complains about in the article there's no getting around it but she was more than happy to take the success of that when she was beating the 56 year olds when she was 21 yeah i you know i i'm very very sort of not cautious, but it is it is sort of uh, cautious of trying to be sympathetic to the situation that 
women have got themselves to that place perhaps and they didn't know if she'd known when she was 21 that if i'd continue down this road when i'm 50 by the time that i'm 56 i'm going to be miserable she probably would have done things differently so partly you think well you know you're culpable to some extent but also nobody warned you and i think it is important to to try and have these warnings out there for women i i'm i'm actually a bit more sympathetic than that because i, I do think that you are a product of your environment to a great degree. And if you're in an environment that that venerates youth and doesn't have any time or consideration for wisdom and age, then you end up in a position where you just don't have anyone point, putting that in your mind. You know, that's just not a thought that you ever have. And there's no reason for you to have had it, you know. Uh, and so it's it's kind of cruel, frankly, what I think our society does to women um, as they grow older. And you, you're getting out, you, you're getting now loads of millennial wine aunts who are getting into their forties. And I, I do these segments on the podcast all the time because whenever, you know, in whatever Vogue or bustle or whatever the women's magazine is where it's, I'm 40 years old. I have three degrees. I earn a hundred thousand pounds uh, dollars a year. I've got two cats and I can't find a man. What's going on? who told you that you would be able to find a man with those credentials you know yep. why would you think uh, you, in your 40s you'd start settling down and finding a, a husband and kids it's, it's not good for either gender no, no, not it's not all. good for men not at all it's not good for men because there is a, a group of career women who are chasing education, mm -hmm. employment, and status throughout their 20s and 30s, which means that they're unavailable. And then by the time that they do get there, most women don't want to be in a relationship with a man that earns less than them and is less yeah. uh, educated, which yeah. means that they've competed themselves out of their own dominance hierarchy because mm -hmm. there's no one above and across. The men that they're looking for are around their age, but the men that are around their age are looking for women that are 10, year young, 10 years younger than them. Uh, yeah, the, and, and also the dating pool is very narrow at that point. Yeah. You know, very, very narrow. And and but it's it's more than that as well, though, because think about what they're doing in the process of coming up to that point where they're like, uh, you know, I, I can't find a man. And why isn't society paying attention? I And, and I, I hear the word invisible being used a lot by these women. Uh, this is a constant and uh, multiple times. I mean, she uses it in that article and I've yep. seen it other, in other places where it's like, I'm invisible. And it's like, yeah, you're like me. I'm invisible. Like, I just walk around and get on with my life. I don't have like women like looking at me and you probably do, but I, I don't have women looking at me as I go past, you know, this is what life is like. Um, but the, but the, the, the sort of like, not necessarily the model, obviously, because she's not competing in an arena where men would also be competing. But the, the 40 year old wine aunt, who's the, you know, the deputy CEO of a company or something, her working in the corporate world is her occupying a position that a man could have been occupying and so she's knocking men, a man down on that sort of social scale. And so when you've got millions of women in the workplace, all like being girl bosses, well, you're generally elevating the status of men in society. And you think, okay, well, you know, men deserve it. I don't care. I'm a feminist. It's like, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But that's my point. You're elevating the level of men in society for your own personal gain, getting to the pinnacle and then being like, I'm lonely. Where are all the good so, men at? Yeah. I'm lonely. Where are all the good men? I can't find a man. It's like, yeah, well, you were selfish. You you didn't consider what men need to be attractive to you, let alone for their own self-esteem and for their own vitality and prosperity. You were just like me, 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 me. And then you're still me, 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 me. And yeah. now it's, and all these guys have just checked out of society. They're just, you know, playing their Xboxes, living in shared accommodation with each other until they're well into their late thirties, drinking beer every night and working crappy jobs. And they, they're fine, you know, because they actually don't need much to get along. But I think if you asked any of them, they would say, yeah, I would like a wife. You know, I would like a family. I would like kids. I would like a successful career. I would like to have the prestige of being the breadwinner in the household. You know, it's not that I'm saying women can't work or anything like that, but like be considerate. Where's the goodwill from either side? You know, and it seems to be the lack of goodwill on the part of the career woman has just ruined the way our civilization works and it's not good for the men it's not good for the women and the results of this are smacking us in the faces right now and there's nothing we can do about it now what's happening people if you enjoyed that then press here for the full unedited episode and don't forget to subscribe peace <laughs>